Check. Okay. I've got a microphone. I have microphone sound. I'm fairly certain if I turn my music on, it will turn it off. But if that's the case, then that's the case. At least I know for a fact that my microphone is fucking working. Cool. Um, so I am working on this painting. Um, I'm doing just a little exercise here, basically, for small artistic movements. Um, I started painting this a little while ago. Um, the reason why is because I picked up a couple of circular canvases, and I was thinking to myself, you know what? I want to turn this into a logo. I thought to myself, ooh, yeah, I'm going to make the DAL logo from Animal Crossing New Horizons. And then I came across a video by Hank Green about tuberculosis. And that changed the way that I wanted to work on this painting completely. So now I am doing that. Drawing a bunch of small bacilli. They are technically... Not necessarily tuberculosis germs, but they are still an indication of infection. I don't know why, but a lot of my paintings as of recent have kind of followed that same scheme too. Let me get a pair of scissors or something real quick. Actually, I think it can work with this. I say as I go immediately go with this. But anyway, like I was saying before, a lot of my most recent paintings have been about... Oh, this is not good. <laughs> Yikes! This is not the brush I wanted to use. <clears throat> and cutting it only made things worse. I just want something with a small bristle. Something that could make a very small, tiny cell wall. Um, a lot of my paintings have been around the idea of infection. And I think that's kind of interesting. I've always been really interested in anatomical processes and what occurs in the microscopic world because I've always liked to think a little bit as though there are multiple things all kind of going on all at the same time. And I think that may be one of the reasons why I'm making these paintings in the first place is to bring my scope back really small. Because a lot of the things that are messing with me in the day to day are things that are outside of my control that are much bigger than I am. That's always been kind of a problem for me.
but <clears throat> it doesn't make the small things any less important. That's why I'm drying these bacilli in the first place. It's because that video that I was watching was all about how bacteria have changed the course of human history and they don't even know that they're doing it. They don't even have brains. They don't even have um, they're not even technically even working together. They're all just small little individual organisms that all came off of one singular organism. This one's got kind of a, a rogue shape. Again, that's what I think is kind of interesting. It's because all of these bacteria have their own general interests, even though they don't have survival instincts or consciousness or anything like that. Just like every other form of life, all it wants to do is stay alive, regardless of what gets in its way. And I think that's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's why I started painting this in the first place, but maybe it's because I feel small. Or maybe it's because I need to simplify. I'm not sure. That's the cool thing about painting. So you never know exactly why these sorts of things come up, but it is fun to discuss. As it stands right now, all I want to do is make sure that these bacilli have visible stained cell walls. <laughs> I wanted the idea also that this is a Petri dish, not necessarily like an ongoing war in somebody's immune system, but just life existing. Um, Outside of conflict, kind of, the only thing that the bacilli are at conflict with themselves are, are themselves and the space that they are in, <clears throat> and eventually the colony will pass off and, you know, etc. I can't guarantee that I'm making these perfect. Obviously, there's some that are kind of like splotchy. Again, I'm working on another thing is outside of this, I'm working on my artist skill of working with as little minor minuscule movements as possible. Very fine brush strokes. Granted, they're all irregular ovals, but it helps me understand the way that the paintbrush kind of works when you put it in that sort of shape. Which I'm still getting used to because I'm not really a painter. I'm a musician mostly. But music has been kind of difficult to access for me as of late. Well, original music has been very difficult for me to access as of late, but painting has been showing up a lot since I busted my hand in February last year. I don't imagine I'm going to find success doing this, but I do find it to be incredibly therapeutic. That's the only reason. That's the reason I do music, too. It's because it's a depression tool. Maybe that's why I haven't really been working in original music. Um... My original stuff, uh, On Being Human, was recorded at a time when I felt very sure of myself and was looking back on it. In fact, that's kind of the, what the entire idea of On Being Human is, is it's a number of life lessons that I need to listen to myself if I ever find myself in a dark place again. It's like all things that you learn from being a human being. Um, but as it stands, I've kind of been back in the grind and... That can get a little bit overwhelming. I 
on top of that, the economy is not so great right now. So that's true for just generally all over the world. So once again, I find myself meditating on the bacilli that I'm painting cell walls around, creating semi-permeable membranes for so that they do not overlap with one another and eat each other out of body and soul. Wouldn't it be delightfully ironic if everything that was alive had a soul? <clears throat> I don't know. I joke about that a lot, actually, in certain ways. The reason I abandoned religion in the first place is because I didn't like the idea of any, like, of just humans being bound to having souls. But imagine, I mean, that's kind of the principle of other sorts of pacifistic religions is that what if other things had souls and then you really have to like batten yourself down and go, okay, what if bacteria had souls? I have to sweep them out of my way lest I crush them. Yet that in and of itself is kind of a difficult sort of thing to do and to think about. Getting there, almost there. Just got a big old hole of black splotches that I need to give outlines. And I want to work on this tough part first because I put a lot of brush strokes in the middle here. Unfortunately, I'm very aware of the fact this is not the way that bacteria sort of operates. They're in much closer quarters with one another, typically. They don't have a whole lot of space between colonies like I have kind of in here. Space is kind of an important thing. Niches are an important thing biologically for every single form of life there is. But bacteria don't usually work around that if they're in the same DNA space. I'll go ahead and do the first two that I drew. Okay. So the mother cells right there. One of the things that I really wanted to work with as far as this painting goes as well is a lot of the paint is reproduced. Basically, I would put a big splotch. There's a number of these that look very irregular or uh, kind of not the same as their neighbors. And that's kind of just because that's the way that these things are, but also uh, it's the way that brush strokes kind of work. Um, but a lot of these were reproduced from, there we go. A lot of these were reproduced from other pieces of paint. So I would put a splotch on there and then I would use that paint to create other splotches just like the way bacteria operate. Yeah, I drew it. I have to give it its own thing, even though it's so small. And 
I don't want to rush it either, to be honest. Because I don't want to create something that looks like uh, one of these guys here. This. Now, it makes sense. For me, I'm willing to canonize that because sometimes bacteria grow cancerous just like our cells. Because that's just generally how life works. Each single cell has their own, you know, their own instructions. And they choose whether or not they want to follow it. And that is true for every single animal except for I think sharks. Sharks aren't the ones that are sharks are the ones that don't get cancer. But it's not I don't think that it's that they don't get cancer. I think it's just that their cells regenerate so quickly that they uh, like apoptize and regrow like regrow and refresh. Like they just have a really good healing factor. It's not that they can't get cancer. It's that the cancer is too slow for their biological processes to catch up to. But every single living thing is generally able to get the same um, choice, I guess. It's not really a choice. It's, it's a mistake. It is a misreading of the genetic information. It's not really a choice so much as it is a... An act of continuing to follow the instructions that you're given, but they are the wrong instructions because of things outside of your control. And as a result, you become an enemy to all the other cells around you. And you have the instructions as well to say to yourself, hey, I can choose to apoptize if I don't feel like things are going right. And that's how cancer typically is worked with. It's fantastic, actually. I heard in my anatomy class that you get cancer like six or seven times a day on average because that's just how it works. I mean, we are completely bombarded by radiation. We have, you know, things going on. You know, we have – it's not like anything to worry about either. It's not like anything we can kind of like work around. And, you know, our ancestors – I don't know if scientists said that our ancestors used to get cancer at generally the same rates – but I happen to know that our bodies are much more resilient than we give them credit for in that sort of way. Ah, eh, shite. Fucked up the cell wall on this one. That's okay. Cancer happens. The cell is crushing itself. Let me wash my brush real quick. Plants are privy to it. We are privy to it as humans, even though it's a very sad thing for us to have to work with with cancer. But at the flip side, we're kind of the only beings of life that can feel that kind of sort of complex grief that we have. But bacteria are equally as likely to just suddenly decide to do something totally out of the ordinary against the will of the colony and the thing that gave it life in the first place. And that's life. There's something kind of magical about that. Because... If there's anything that I feel as of now is that a lot of my complications that I have in my life are all sort of man-made. A lot of it comes down to a fear of poverty, a fear of othering, a fear of being judged by other people outside of my purview and ability. Um... And it makes me kind of uncomfortable because I was raised better than that. But also at the flip side, I don't really have the wherewithal to stop that sort of thing from happening either. (laughs) 
one of the things that I am trying to work with in my 30s is trying to combat that, to be more aware of the simple life and to be grateful for all the simplistic things that we have in our lives, all the things that I used to be very happy about when I was a lot younger. Um, and I guess that's just a function of aging because it sounds very boomer of me to say that. But that's just generally also the character of nostalgia. I know for a fact I used to have similar feelings when I was, you know, much younger, when I hadn't lived as much experience as I had to this point. And I would be saying the same things. Like, you know, I, I miss things when things were simpler. I feel like that's generally an idea that a lot of us are having as human beings right now is that we just want things to be simpler. Especially with the you know, like advents of everything that's been going on in the past two decades, you know. Moreover, what's been going on in the last three or four years, you know, we all lived through a quote unquote new normal during the pandemic, which uh, reverted pretty swiftly back to the old normal. Um with a couple of changes here and there. Now we don't use Skype very much anymore. Um, working from remote places is a lot bigger. Um, so naturally there's more of a tendency to want to make every single hour of our waking days into work in some way or another to keep ourselves accountable to the puritanical values of hard work and determination and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, which is a bunch of bullshit. But, you know, we still kind of work around that. I think one of the issues that we have is that not all work is made the same. For instance, I am a musician. I am an artist. And one of the things that I find is very difficult about my gift is that um while I can evaluate myself and say, damn, I have really good technique and I have really good skill and I am very adaptable and I can learn all these different things, uh, you know, when it comes to art, I do, I, I, I can say the same thing on my resume because I'm very similarly minded as far as that goes. Like I didn't start being a painter until a few years ago and I hope, hopefully it shows, <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't matter if you've been painting for one year, two years, a month, three days. You're an artist. You're making art. You're creating something. The problem with art is that it has to be evaluated by powers bigger than me. And I've looked into this as well. You know, I'm glad to live in an era where my work is not strictly seen as being a providence given to me by a higher power that I have to focus my art making only stuff that is devoted to God. I'm glad that I wasn't born during those, you know, four, three, four thousand years. Um, but the trade-off that kind of occurred is that art is, instead of being patroned by the church, that has changed hands to art critics. That has changed hands to the nouveau riche. You make art so that people can buy art. And that is the fundamental problem that I have with creating art because I don't want my art to be worth anything. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You know, I put my work into this and granted, the only thing I want out of it is that somebody either enjoys it or has some kind of thought that comes out of it or, you know, you look at it and it changes you in a certain sort of way. And that's it. That's all that I want out of the art. But the problem is that if I want to do this for a living, I have to keep an idea on it for like a living. You know, I can't just make art. I have to make art to sell. 
because otherwise I can't be happy. I can't afford groceries. I can't afford my rent. I can't afford my shelter. I can't afford to purchase new clothes or to wash them. Um, and that is incredibly distressing. It puts a huge damper on me wanting to make art in the first place because as soon as it's made, you have a guilt complex. Now with music, it's not hard it's easy for me to kind of like work around that guilt complex, right? Because I'm not spending hours of my time making sure that cell walls are perfect. If I'm spending hours of my time making music, it's to make sure that I am performing it as it was supposedly, I mean, as it's supposed to be reproduced, or I'm working with a new way to play the same song um, that might improve the way it sounds on stage, give it a different like meaning to the people who are listening to it, reminds them that they're listening to a live performance, you know, which is I think kind of one of the interesting and ironic things about the evaluation of covers is because most people, when they listen to covers, they want to hear covers. They want to hear it sound exactly the way that they remember hearing it. But they also want to hear it in a different way. And Ain't that just the, the, the thing about it as well, <laughs> is that if you're an artist, you don't get to evaluate based on how good you feel that the thing ended up turning out. You create something, and then it is understood in five trillion different ways. And then you can't make new art. You have to make sure that you make a statement about the way that the art is supposed to land or, you know a way that it's supposed to be understood because otherwise you can cause some really destructive things to happen. And that's scary. I don't like the idea of causing people pain uh, with my art. Yet here I am painting Basili. Not necessarily fatal, Basili, but it is not a subject that would make people happy. My previous uh, work, Atherosclerosis, is much similar. It, it depicts an artery um, under the effects of arteriosclerosis, you know, the fatty deposits of you know, cholesterol building up inside of an artery. And these are not subjects that make people happy. And I think that's why I'm doing these in the first place, on top of the idea that it's, oh, it's an infection. It's, it's, uh, it's got a number of biological connotations. Is also not art that somebody would feel comfortable generally looking at. Either because they see bacteria, or maybe they see tuberculosis, or maybe they have tryptophobia. And they're not interested in seeing a canvas covered in holes. But I defy that. Because I feel like there's something generally sort of messy about it, but also a beauty to be had in the recognition of the things that are smaller than us. Because if we ignore the things that are smaller than us, they can come back and bite us in the ass.
I don't remember which germs at this point are dry or not. So I feel as though my hands are definitely going to get a little messy. Damn it. Still wet. Looks like I need to mix the paint again. Messy. It's also because the paint isn't really that great either. This is acrylics from Five Below. The, everything for that you see here is, is was purchased at a discount store. The brushes, the paint, the canvas, the artboard, all of it was purchased at a five dollar or below store. But that's no. That's no problem. That's neither here nor there. It's another issue with having your artwork evaluated is that your materials will also be like, oh, well, you didn't appear to use uh, these $3,000 paints. Therefore, your artwork is not worth it. And... Quite frankly, I defy. I understand that there is definitely a crafts work difference between utilizing cheap paint, cheap brushes, cheap canvas. I understand that, but art should not be constrained to such ideals in the same way that you cannot blame a percussionist who plays buckets just because the man is utilizing under you know just because the man is utilizing drums that don't match the the cost profile doesn't mean he doesn't have the beat you know it doesn't mean he doesn't have the rhythm it's just that he's using a kit it's non-conventional that's unorthodox <laughs> Which 
just because you have the knack to create doesn't mean you should constrain yourself to thinking I'm not going to go get the cheap stuff. Believe me, I have worked with musicians who are like, oh, I want to make sure that I put down at least $4,000 on effects pedals and stuff. But the problem is if you don't know how to play, it doesn't matter what you put down. Now, granted, there is a market there for very simplistic music that requires, you know, delay pedals, but um, unless that's what you want to do, you know, a lot of the people that I hear that are big time musicians that are like, oh man, I'm going to drop so much money on, on pedals and guitars and keyboards and stuff. You know, they're, they're okay. They've got the gumption that makes things sell in the music industry, but they, I don't know if I can say whether or not they have like the talent. Granted, they, I can't disparage them as I work with my $5 paints. But they've got the knack of the business, man. And sometimes, you know what? Again, I'm a fan of ambient drone music. It doesn't take a lot to make me happy. Put on a tone that sounds inquisitive and activates the beta frequencies. <laughs> and uh, I'm a happy camper. Whew, I'm almost done. I'm surprised. I didn't think I would get this done today. But, you know... That's the power of being accountable to the camera. Even if there's nobody watching, you are at least timing yourself. I woke up at 8 o'clock today. Uber doesn't get busy until 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's when breakfast and brunch and stuff are. Now it's 10 o'clock, actually. So I should be getting to go pretty soon. But thankfully, I was able to get these cell walls all done. Granted, I'm starting to make a little bit of a mess. So... Almost. I thought I would be ending up using all of this paint. Or I thought I would end up using all of this paint. Turns out that I didn't. I'm kind of interested in that, to be honest with you. But there are some cell walls that I want to give like a second go over as well. So I don't think I'm totally done just yet. Oof. Big cell wall. Cramped little bacilli. OK. 
है check to see if there's any more that aren't done. I think I got all of them. Yeah, I got all of them. Oh, <sighs> pretty good. I'm going to let it sit for a little while. I'm going to let it dry. Um, I'm happy that I got this generally worked with. I still feel as though there are some spots on the cell walls that I want to make better. But at the same time, it's under a Petri dish. Microscopes look like this. So I'll see. And then I'll also see about what I want to do as far as uh, the outer rim of the painting. Because I like the idea of hitting the rest of the canvas with stuff. But we'll figure that out. Not bad. <laughs>